Uh, nice, nice to meet you, everyone. I, I really like this introduction. I think we should start with introduction. It doesn't matter if we are 50 people next time, uh, but I think we, it's a good uh, it's a good way of starting. Because um, I, I liked learning about actually what you do and understanding how aware you are or familiar you are of Vargas. Um, so let's... Today's meeting is, you know, very casual. We don't have much to present. We would like to inform you about uh, what's coming next month. So about uh, four core functionalities that are coming in Argos uh, and about uh, an event that is coming that you can also participate. But before doing that, I understand that some uh, participants would like to know more about Argos. So maybe I can quickly uh, demo uh, the a very simple, let's say, flow of creating um, your DMP in Argos. So let me quickly do that. First, I need to share the correct window. This one, right? No, it's not. Can you see the screen? I don't know what you see. Now. Yes, yes, we can see it. Yes. Argus, right? Not the other one, because I have. Yes. Okay, we can good. see uh, argos.openair.eu. Splash. Okay, good. Right, so this is the landing page uh, of Argos. Uh, you know, you can have a look later. We are working uh, with my colleague Maria, as you uh, as you saw uh, today. We are working uh, on re-designing um, this website. Uh, so we will have a, a new, let's say, landing page. Um, during like before the summer, around the summer. But for now, if you want to enter the tool, it's by clicking the start your DMP or the login. And then there are different options to choose to log in uh, from. You do not sign up in Argo, so we do not store any password, uh, nothing. We just borrow them from external providers like Google, like Orchid. So we, we take uh, your credentials from there. And a tip is if you want to log in with your institutional account, and uh, sorry, credentials, then that is uh, possible if you select open air and then you will be redirected here. And if I choose uh, another account and choose to sign in with Edge again, then I can search my institution. I was already in with Athena. Uh, I can search my institution and add my credentials and log in with my institutional credentials. So this is something that uh, a lot of people ask, how can I do it? This is how you can do it. So if you're not logged in, you can still use, um, I mean, browse Argos. Mainly, you can browse the public DMPs that are um, available from other colleagues in working in different domains. Uh, they have shared them openly. Uh, you can find them here, and you can also check them on Zenodo, download them, and, you know, um, consult them. Also, you can see the descriptions for the different outputs that they have created, that, this, I, that these are associated with these uh, plants, these DMPs. So let's go to home and let's actually log in. Quickly, I will use Google for me because I have everything synced there. And now I can see more 
possibilities. I can see that besides of the public dashboard with plans and descriptions, I can also see uh, my uh, activity, uh, my dashboards, my plans, and my descriptions. So you notice that we don't, we are moving away from using uh, the term DMP because we see that software management plans also are popping up. And even um, other types of output uh, are are uh, or are requested by policies or are uh, encouraged uh, by uh, communities to be described in a DMP. So because the DMP purpose is uh, expanding to support different types of outputs and activities and actors, that's why uh, we have um, uh, we're moving away, as I mentioned, from referring to DMPs to referring to them as plans. And for us, a plan might have a description of a data set, uh, a description of the software, um, both of them, only one of them, it doesn't matter. Uh, it depends on the needs of the research project. So it's very versatile how you want to use them. Um, right, so here you can see my dashboard. I have some plants with the descriptions uh, of each plan inside. And if I want to create my own, I click Start New Plan from here. And I choose Start Wizard. The import from file is very uh, advanced. It's a specific modification of a uh, JSON file that should be read by the uh, by this input uh, mechanism so that it's uploaded. So it's very specific to RDA common standard in particular. Um, it's not used that commonly because you need to structure the you, you need to you know structure the JSON file according to this uh, specification. But if you want to start from scratch as you would you, you know you would uh, normally do following the steps and answering the questions, you click start. And then uh, for those of you who have used it in the past, you see that this screen has changed. This is not a screen that redirects to uh, many, many fields as we had before, but it's a common, um, let's say, screen with two uh, fields that um, ask for um, descriptive metadata of the DMP. So uh, title, plan, description of plan. And once we give that, we select the type of blueprint we want this plan uh, to have. The blueprint is the structure of uh, the whole plan. So if we have, if we have a project that uh, should have descriptions for both software and data sets, for example, then we create a blueprint that combines both these plans, software management plans and data management plans. And uh, you can select this blueprint, let's say from here, this is a good example, Cistera. Cistera is a consortium of national funders funding ICT projects in Europe. And they have uh, a, a good example of a blueprint that combines both software management plans and data management plans. So uh, let me use that uh, and click next. You see that uh, the structure that the blueprint has is has some basic information about the plan, the license, because we want at the end uh, the DMP to have a license so that it's uh, applied some of the fair principles so that it's findable, accessible, and therefore reusable. And to be reusable, it should have a license. We recommend the Creative Commons, the Creative Commons 4, CC BY uh, attribution, where we can, uh, others can reuse our, our DMP, but we get acknowledged uh, for um, sharing it openly and uh, having it available to others. Uh, we can add funding and we have two sections where we can uh, describe the content 
uh, regarding data sets and software. So let's let's take it from from scratch though, uh, from the start. Sorry, uh, I gave the title before and the description of the plan before, so it's kept. It's pre-filled here. I can add the researchers that are going to work uh, on the DMP. So these are, for example, me. Let's say, and I can find them uh, with their orchid. I can search them with the ORCID, or if I cannot find them with the ORCID, I can insert manually. Maybe they have a researcher ID um, or other identifiers, and I can add them manually here. Same with the affiliations. I can select from the list of uh, sources that we harvest from Open Air, and for example, select the Clean Air Research Center. If I couldn't find it, again, same thing, insert it manually. Change the language if I want to write the DMP in a different language. And when I invite my colleagues to help me with filling this information of this DMP, then um, this will become, this contact field will become a drop down where I can select which of those invited uh, colleagues can serve as the contact point for this particular DMP. So now it's me because I haven't shared it with anyone. I'm the only one. I'm the owner uh, and uh, the only person that has access to it. But if I share it with all of you, then this will become a list with all of you and I can select who is going to, to be the contact point. License. I gave a license to my DMP already. Oops, sorry. Already. And access rights is... Again, we want um, others to be able to find uh, the DMPs um, so that they can see, they can get the whole picture of the management activities, research management activities in the project, if it's available. So if we're not talking about sensitive data, for example, uh, sensitive information, sorry. We keep it restricted as we write the DMP, and if we want to open it up to others, we choose open access. So for sure, before depositing the DMP, um, we recommend to switch to open access. When you switch at the same time, um, the DMP becomes available under public plans, as we saw before. And when it's deposited, it's uh, openly available like this. Um, to others so that they can uh, download and uh, check the metadata. Under funding, we just add the funder. Oops. Um, and that will be Sistera for here. And the grant from Sistera, so which project um, that this grant for the project. If I cannot find it again, I always have the option to insert it manually. Let's save it just to be sure that nothing will be um, lost. And then moving on to the fourth, um, to the fourth section is where I can start adding content for the data sets of the project that will be produced, reused, or um, collected. If I click add, then I have the option to pre-fill or manually insert um, information. So pre-fill, for example, hopefully this will do the trick. Hmm. Yeah, this is um, from the API that we are using. Okay, uh, so pre-fill would pre-fill this, the title, description, and some content. But otherwise, you can always manually add it. Title of data set. Oops. Data set description. Description about the, about the data set. You can add some tags. And when you select the template again, just to verify, then the whole content appears. So you can see that this, uh, these are the sections that are 
asked for me to answer one to seven. And I can start answering them by selecting from, you know, drop down lists, from adding narratives, making hyperlinks, even, oops, making hyperlinks, point to uh, Stenner's uh, references. And I can start, you know, all, also uh, reading the instructions or guidance that might be available under each question and answering them. And then when I'm ready, I can save and close. And I can continue with creating more descriptions for more data sets or data set collections. Or I can also, if I have a software, go to the next uh, section, do the same for a software that um, I'm creating creating. So add basic information like title and description of the software and then move on to, um, again, um, answering uh, questions for the software management, uh, like if there's documentation available and other relevant testing and to reproducibility and to interoperability questions. And when I am ready, I save it. And I can see everything under my plans. There it is. Uh, I can export it in different formats, PDF, document, XML, and RDA JSON. This is very specific to the RDA uh, standard that we are using so that the DMPs at the end, so the plans at the end, this, this uh, at the end is interoperable. Add a new description at any point, invite more people to, uh, like my colleagues, to help. I can invite Maria, for example, and give her owner uh, co-ownership to edit this DMP or member just to view. And I can clone the DMP even if I want to um, repurpose some of the parts of the DMP, like the software or the data set. So maybe I want to repurpose only the software, so I check this and I save it, and then the, this new DMP has only the, uh, the software description and nothing else. And if I go back again, I can see, I can continue editing, I can add more descriptions, I can finalize it, start always a new version uh, of my DMP, which is linked to the one that I already created. So if I go back, now I see two versions, zero and one, and they are linked. Okay. Uh, and I can finalize it. I can finalize, for example, maybe uh, the DMP with only the software, submit it. And if I click deposit now, uh, provided that I have, uh, of course, all the um, metadata, um, completed uh, during uh, the writing process, I click deposit, select the nodo, and the possibilities are, the options are two, logging with Zenodo if you have your credentials, which we recommend, because this will, um, this means that you are also the author uh, in the uh, Zenodo record, or use our credential to uh, push uh, this information to Zenodo. So either we do it for you with a token, or you do it with just logging in with your credentials and then I don't want to push anything now, but um, we saw before an already ready version. So when I click deposit, then immediately I have this, um, this box with the EOI and I can visit what I created, which is again, we, we had that already open like this. But this is how it works. Um, maybe we have 
questions from people that it's their first time uh, looking at how Argus works. There are no questions, neither in the chat or uh, in uh, the Google Doc. Uh, however, um, maybe Ali, we can uh, clarify the different uh, usage of Argos between uh, researchers and uh, administrators. Yes, there is also the possibility to create your own blueprints, templates, and structures basically of how you want the plan to be at the end with which questions content and order of sections and everything you can do it but you need more uh rights you need to be admins as you said uh, uh, julia and for that when you do that we will give you uh, access and uh, you, you can see all the um I mean, you, you can see this uh, new functionalities that appear when you're an admin or a template editor even, and you can start with creating your own template. And yes, it's, I, I don't know if I should now go into this demoing how the, um, uh, the admin works. But we have, yes, Monica? And I ask about the, then how to sign in and if uh, for like researchers in certain institutions, can they create their own account or how does it work? No, the, you don't sign up to Argos, you just sign in. So if you want, you still see my screen, right? Yes. Uh, okay, good. So if you want to use your institutional um, credentials, then you click on Open Air. Mm -hmm. Let me maximize it. You click choose another account, sign in with Edge again, and then it's signing in, you know, finding the institution that you want from the list and selecting it and then adding your credentials. Okay. Here. I need to work to see if it works for us. If it doesn't, we should config. We should change some configurations. Yes, we okay. we receive. Yes, we are doing that for other uh, institutions okay. as well. Thank you. Thank you. Let me log in again. In the case you have, uh, um, you need help. You can uh, write uh, to the helpdesk. Openair. Yes. You. And just to say that uh, we are going to have uh, this, maybe that's a good uh, opportunity to say it, that we are going to have a new release of Argos uh, next month, probably late uh, April, early May, because uh, we want to have some, run some good tests on it. And you will have more, you will have a different login up page but you will still be able to uh, log in uh, with your institutional accounts and credentials uh, but we will we, we'll, yeah, we'll have another uh, community call where we'll go through uh, every new feature when this release is up uh, but for what's coming now you saw what's there today but for what is coming, let me switch. Can you see still my screen with the Menti? Yes. Oh, good. Perfect. Why don't I see it? Okay. Then I created a Menti um, where I'm just for fun. Uh, <laughs> because... You can put uh, in the presenter mode. Okay, Perfect. good. Thank you. And I have added like four, let's say, functionalities that are coming next month to which I'm going to tell you uh, what they are going to be about uh, so how they will enhance what we already saw today and I would like uh, your feedback not me only but the whole team <laughs> would like your feedback uh, because we still have time to um, make changes so if we if you want something to be 
seen in a particular or made in a particular way, we still have time to uh, modify things before we release everything. So a lot of people have been requesting uh, reviewing uh, options. So they would like to uh, be able to review a DMP and not just edit it. Um, and we have been receiving, we have been collecting all these uh, requests. And now it's the time we have uh, worked on a reviewing functionality where uh, you will be able to, as you write the DMP, to also uh, make comments uh, as annotations, let's say, to a specific point in the DMP that you want. For example, question one about um, data formats. You can make a comment there and give you know your feedback to the DMP authors um, about what they could do to enhance, uh, maybe use more open formats and so on. So, so we are going to have this reviewing functionality and um, yes, we want to know your thoughts. Do you think this is uh, something that will help you as well? Were, were you part of the group that requested it? Um, it's good to know. Um, and how how would you like the reviewing to be? Should it be a different screen, for example? Should it be embedded inside? the Argos area where we saw before that you can, wh where you write your input, um, how would be more uh, convenient? You can... I don't know, maybe I did something that I don't know. Ah, no, this is you. Looks like uh, you need to moderate the questions. But there are no questions, right? Ah, enable questions. Okay. Enable comments. Okay, now I think I enabled them. Sorry. Did I? Can you write? Okay, let me see. Test. Okay, I wrote the test, but nothing is up. Interesting. Ah, I think I should change to another, sorry. It's the first time that I'm also using this moderation thing. Why did I do it like that? Anyway. <laughs> can I choose who can be a reviewer? Uh, um, so we split. Let's approve first so that we all see it. Okay. Okay. Now I know how it works. Good. Uh, so the question is can I choose who can be a reviewer? And yes, you can choose it during the invitation. So you saw where I, uh, where I clicked invite and I invited my colleague Maria to join me in writing the DMP. I, I had only two options. So this option will be uh, enhanced and you will have a reviewing also option. So there you can invite people that will become the reviewers. This is, um, yeah, this is how the functionality is planned. Let me go back again. For example, do you want to see, um, where would you like to see a history of the comments left? Would you like to um, have a dedicated space inside Argos where you see everything? Would you like to, um, who should be able to resolve uh, even the these comments? Is it only the owner? Is it the co-owner? 
So people invited with editing rights. Let me see. Do you mean uh, something like uh, a GitHub uh, revision uh, in which you can uh, suggest uh, the revision or like uh, um, like some publication venue when uh, you have uh, a letter from a reviewer that is like uh, next uh, to uh, the venue and you can read what the reviewer is saying? Yes, like a Word document, for example, that you open and you find the comments um, but then they disappear right do we want them to be like that for example in word if you uh, resolve them and delete them then they uh, disappear do we want the same here do we want to keep them somewhere i think it's uh, interesting uh, uh, to have uh, a reviewer um that can be uh, I don't know, the supervisor, uh, a colleague, or even outside the, the, the group. Mm -hmm. But it also depends if uh, the reviewer should be the project officer, for instance. Mm -hmm. So yes, how... it depends. Correct. How can I decide who can be? Uh, the project officer cannot do the perform the review on Argus I mean they they want the an exported um, file the, you know an exported form of the DMP um, okay so, and so that's different okay so uh, the question could be after uh, if um, uh, I received uh, the um, comment from uh, the project officer uh, and maybe at the first uh, um, time I'm not asking a reviewer. Um, then after uh, the second uh, the second DMP revised, can I ask uh, in that moment another reviewer? You can ask, you, you can invite reviewers at any time. This is what you mean? Yes. Yes, at any time. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me move on to the next. So, again, we have been receiving some requests for the email notifications that we send when a DMP or a plan, actual financial plan or whatever it is, uh, is updated. So when you update it, you receive notifications and the whole team actually, uh, every time you click save. We have minimized that in the past, but what we uh, are going to do now is we're going to collect all these notifications and instead of sending them via email, we're going to introduce a, a notification uh, space uh, in, in, in Argos. This is what in-app means. So in the Argos, you will have a bell where you can see if there are new notifications. And then if you click it, you will be able to see all the changes performed in different plans that you are either the owner or the co-owner or the reviewer uh, for the DMP uh, or the plan. Um, for any of your activity inside Argos. Um, and we're going to keep the email notifications sent every, um, we're going to see every day is the last um, discussion that we had. Uh, we're going to send every day, at the end of the day, a summary of the new changes happened in this plan. Um, do you think that this aligns with uh, your uh, with your needs as well? Is it better to have uh, this 
option to have inside Argos notification, you know, the bell, click it, see what, what changed instead of receiving emails. I'll take that as a, I'll take this as yes, uh, and I'll move on to the next. Okay. Uh, the pre-filling functionality uh, currently has been enhanced, and that's why um, we couldn't use it uh, fully today, um, because oh, sorry. Uh, be because um, what you will be able now to do is select from which source you want to prefill the DMP, a, actually a particular section of a DMP. So for example, if you have uh, a section uh, and a template that is only about ethics and you have a um, you have a source inside your institution maybe that uh, you want to connect to this DMP. You have a source where uh, you keep this ethics report, let's say, uh, inside your CMS, your system, the university system. We can use this um, form to pre-fill already the DMP with some information around ethics that are asked in the DMP. So we can start making these connections with uh, other um, sources, both sources from repos like repositories, for example, that we can link the data set and get the metadata of the data set to pre-fill parts of the DMP or even an ethics report, for example, if it's available uh, we can also uh, do that. And since, uh, I mean, until today, the prefilling functionality works only for repositories, and this is changing. So if you are an admin, for example, on Argos, you will be able to select each time which source you want to prefill, to use to prefill the DMP with information maybe from um, other departments across uh, your university. Um, and then, lastly, I think it's the fourth, right? Uh, we have, we'll have no dependency. Um, a, a lot of uh, our, you know, our users and maybe you also have been requesting uh, their own space inside argos.openair.eu, but their own space also not only in terms of storage, but also in terms of look and feel. So, for example, they would like to be able when they log into argos.openair.eu here to see um well let's say here maybe because the landing page will be same so when they log in with their institutional account as we saw before they want to be able to see different things for example uh, a logo of their institution somewhere here wherever different uh, fonts, different um, different uh, colors even, so different things. Um, maybe the terms, the about, the closer, the terms to be also uh, in their own language. And they want to also be able to have control of this, the activity that the researchers that log in with the institutional credentials um, to see what are the, the plans that they create, to 
to be able to, you know, have more control of what's happening uh, in this space um, that is now tailored to uh, the institutional needs. Uh, at the end, that means that instead of also, if you're a tenant in Argos, that means that uh, at the end, instead of choosing the nodo, you might want to configure and link to your own repository so that the DMPs are exposed to your own repository and are linked to other uh, outputs that you have there. So these are all things that we took into consideration when talking to, to you not only uh, during the, the calls, the community calls, but also um, offline uh, in the, the help desk, uh, the request that we receive in the help desk. And we're going to uh, introduce this uh, multi-tenancy. So whoever wants to have their own space and look and feel and configurations on Argos uh, to, for example, switch from Zenodo and configure their own or create their own blueprints with their own pre-filling configuration uh, and their own templates. They are able or add their logo or do whatever they, they want. They will be able to do it um, with this feature. And yeah, do you think this is um, something that uh, speaks to you as well. Ah, I think I should have opened it. Sorry, I now see what I did. Now you can write, right? Yes, we can We, we can write questions. Okay. It, it was open all, all the time. Ah, okay, okay. No worries. <laughs> um, New new features on Menti also, so <laughs> I'm getting myself familiar with them. Is it? Uh, do you think you will use it uh, more as it is with the Zenodo configuration, for example? Like, let's take this as an example. Or um, or with a customization, does it make any difference for you, for example? It's, is it the same? Are there any you know, more um, pressuring issues that you would like to see? So this is not of your concern at the moment. Maybe we can ask uh, to the people that are here from uh, institutions, uh, like uh, Monica, Sara, or Gurel, um, or Katia even, if uh, um, for you having the logo or a customized page, uh, it's better for your institution when you are uh, suggesting uh, Argos as a DMP tool, for having a machine actionable DMP or to use uh, for um, specific founders uh, data management plan. Do you have any thought about that? Um, I can say that uh, for the time being, we, are, uh, we have a institutional repository which does not uh, contain uh, data we will have another repository with data but is yet to come and uh, i think uh, that if you could connect argos to our repository it could be uh, better i mean uh, everything stays in one place you know uh, i think it's a good idea but we still don't have um, the possibility to to test it so uh, everybody is just jumping from one tool to another and uh, i think uh, as soon as we have uh, this new repository for data 
this will be clearer. It also would be easier to make some proposal uh, more than other and to suggest uh, some instruments and tools instead of other. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why I'm just having a look at the different uh, tools. I think it's uh, quite friendly, as I see, because this is the first thing. It's, uh, it could be, you should be attractive and friendly. <laughs> Otherwise, the researchers won't use it. It's just a, a burden, just a, something they have to do and they don't understand the, uh, the reason and also the, uh, the possibility that this kind of instruments give them as long mm -hmm. as it is uh, too difficult to use. If, he, if at the end, uh, this tool is connected with uh, our repository, our system, it should be better. Mm -hmm. I don't know what uh, entails uh, because uh, our repository has uh, have um, uh, is not uh, um, managed by us directly, but mm -hmm. we have uh, software managers which are outside uh, for Italy. It is uh, Cineca, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know how to. To connect it and to <laughs> it will be also a challenge to to know how they could make uh, uh, these connections with uh, uh, tools coming from outside. But this is about the data repository, right? That's uh, like a one. This is uh, I'm talking about now about the uh, publication repository oh, the publication. because uh, the data repository is yet to come, so we still have to see how mm. maybe this year we will start uh, to implement it. Mm. But uh, as, as to my experience with uh, the publication repository, uh, it's not easy to connect uh, different systems, uh, especially if uh, mm. you are not the software uh, manager. You always have, have to ask, and uh, it depends also on their kind of... Uh, uh, the settings of the repository, the settings of the software platform, and they call them customizations, you know? Mm, yeah, I see. I see. But I think it, it is a good idea to, to make a connection with the repository. Mm. As a repository manager, <laughs> I think it's a, a good idea to have everything within a system. So it is also easy for us to uh, to see what is going on and uh, to monitor also how our research is going on. Yeah. Okay. Instead of okay. looking in Zenodo, in a, Zenodo is very good, but it's outside. If I have to make uh, a report, I have to mm. look in different places. If I have everything in one place, it's uh, easier for us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It took some notes. <clears throat> We can have, um, if you are building a new repository, uh, now Zenodo has launched uh, um, a new repository system with the same software as Zenodo, in which uh, you can uh, create uh, your own repository uh, with data that are compatible with OpenAir, and it will be very easy for us to connect. Mm, okay. They are the in venue, you mean, right? Yes, are I can it in the chat. Okay, and being mindful of the time, I would like to move. Apparently, that changed. I would like to uh, end this uh, community call with uh, an invitation to this reproducibility cafe workshop that we are um, organizing together with uh, my colleague Stefania. Uh, we're working, as I mentioned before, in the Tier 2 project, which is all about reproducibility. And uh, we have a pilot there where we use Argos to extend the concept of TMPs to reproducibility management plans. So, so that the plans at the end uh, incorporate more elements uh, on reproducibility. We're going to have um, this uh, two-hour workshop, cafe, <laughs> uh, 
on the 24th of April, uh, 10 to 12 Central European time, and we would be happy to, to see you there. Uh, maybe, I don't know if we can. Yeah, I think yes. we'll the a link in, in, the, in the chat, uh, a link to the event with all the details and the registration link. Thank you, thank you, Stefania, exactly what I wanted uh, to say. Thanks for adding that in the chat. Uh, so you can find more information there, uh, as well as how to register. And we're happy to, to see you also there and if you, if you want to, to participate. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it's uh, the Catholic Easter, right? Uh, approaching, so I wish you all um, happy Easter with friends and family. Uh, I know it's not a long time uh, for you know a long holiday, but still it's something uh, that can keep us, uh, you know, <laughs> a bit more, um, you know, move away some of the urge of the summer that we all feel <laughs> suddenly when, when spring comes. So yeah, uh, all the best wishes. Thank you very much to my colleagues as well for, for being here and supporting this. And um, it was really nice talking to all of you and having this discussion. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Eileen. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.